that we have together. And I am praying for God to move, for God to encourage you, for God to, to lift you up, for God to draw you near to himself in this time. So, even though we may be distant right now, God has given us this opportunity to connect. So I want to pray, and then we're going to dive into God's Word in this message that He's laid on my heart to share with you today. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another opportunity that you give us to connect together. It doesn't matter how much distance is physically between us, Lord God. You allow us to connect together through technology through these times that we get to spend together in your presence and in your word. I pray, God, may you move. May you draw us near to you. May you stir in our hearts, Lord, exactly what you would have for us to receive from this time. May the words that are heard be from you and for those who hear them, Lord. I just pray that no matter, even though we may be distant, God, we can know and trust that we are never distant from you because you are always there. Please bless this time and encourage everyone who hears this message, including myself. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So what I want to share with you uh, is something that, that I believe God has for me as much as it is for you. So if you're hearing this today, just know that God is, is using this message not only in your life, but in my life. And I believe and I pray that whether you're a student in school right now or whether you're an adult, a parent, a, a single person, whatever, I believe that God can use this message to encourage you because it's something that we can all relate to. It's something that each and every one of us experience and go through in our lives. You see, at a very early age, very early in school, we learn about these things called seasons. And so I started thinking about that as I was working on this message. And I, I began to think how crazy of a season it is that we find ourselves in now. And then I started to think, well, you know, when you learn about seasons in school, you learn the very simple things to start off with, right? You learn that there are four seasons, winter, spring, summer, and fall. And they rotate and they just keep going and they cycle. Winter, spring, summer, fall. Winter, spring, summer, fall. And they go through every year the same order and the same seasons. Now, we also learn that they have time frames, right? There's a time for each season. One season, begins another season is ending and then when one season ends another season begins you see and what that tells us and what we learn from that is that seasons change they don't last all year long they don't last forever but rather that they change now there may be some exceptions depending on where you live such as in south carolina you may have all four seasons in a week's time but other than that Yes, seasons change, right? And this is something that we all experience, not just the seasons every year that we, you know, when it is referred to or, or in regards to weather and, and the yearly seasons, but seasons change in our lives. We all go through them. It's inevitable. Every single one of us has season change in our life. You can't es escape it. It's something that we can all expect to happen. Now, it may happen at different times, at different rates, but for each and every one of us, we go through seasons in our lives, and that's okay. Right now, many students are actually experiencing a change in their season that they never expected. Right at the beginning of the year, they never anticipated that they would not be able to go to school physically, but rather that they would have to finish out the year with virtual school. Now, yes, they still have school. They still have these classes throughout the week, but it's it's not the same. Now, for some students, it doesn't matter. They're excited about it because they don't have to get up and go to school. But for others, for instance, take the seniors. This is a difficult change in season for them. This is a difficult time that they're facing because everything that they had looked forward to for their senior year has changed. Maybe they were playing a sport and they can't now. Maybe they were looking forward to the things in their club or in some, uh, some group that they participated in through school, 
that now they can't meet. They can't do these things. Their seasons have changed unexpectedly, something that they never anticipated, something that they did not even think was a possibility six months ago, now all of a sudden has become a reality. And we're having to adapt. And not just seniors, not just students in school, but even adults, parents, people working, right? Some people have been laid off. Some people are put on hold for their jobs, but hopefully we'll be able to go back to them as soon as things turn around and we step into a new season again. You see, but it, the, the thing that we need to remember is that throughout each and every season, they're gonna be different. They're gonna be challenges. Some are gonna be easy. Some may be difficult. They're gonna be struggles. There's gonna be hardships. There's gonna be ups and downs, right? But you see, one thing that we can take away is what we learn in this season can set us up for success in the next one to come. You see, what we learn in the season that we are currently in can set us up for success in what is to come. You see, we can we, we have a couple of choices. We can either let the season that we are in, if it's a difficult one, knock us down and beat us up and wear us out. Or we can stand up, we can embrace what we are going through, good or bad, and we can, can begin to look forward and look ahead to what is in front of us. And rather than looking behind us at what has been, and rather than allowing the moment to overwhelm us, we can always keep looking forward and keep pushing forward to what lies ahead. You see, in this season of difficulty, in this season that is uh, uncertain, in this season that we don't know what is next, we can still be preparing. We can still be growing and we can still be maturing for what is ahead, for what will come, not necessarily what is now. We can still be uh, wading through the waters, but looking ahead for what is to come. You see, one of the great things, even though seasons change, even though we go through difficult times, what we can know is that the change in seasons is just opportunity for new beginnings. You see, it's not all about certain things ending, right? Sometimes things end for good, uh, it, you know, for the benefit of, of our lives. We want things to end so that new things can begin. You see, it's not all bad. You see, a season just means an opportunity for a new beginning, a chance to start something new. And I don't know about you, but I've gone through seasons in life where I could not wait for a new opportunity, for a new beginning, for something to happen and to come about so that I didn't have to stay where I was, but I could move forward on to what God has for me. You see, in changes that we go through, the difficulties that we face in life, the seasons that we uh, come in and come out of, you see, sometimes that may be because of things that we do that causes the change. And that could be good or that could be bad, right? And then sometimes it's just a part of life. It's something that we can't really control, something that we don't have control over, something that we just have to roll with the punches and just get used to. You see, and that's okay. And that's all right. And we can deal with those as they come, good or bad. You see, but the success that we find in life is based on how we persevere through the seasons that we are in. The success that we have in life is based on the perseverance that we have for the season that we are in right now. Like I said, you have a choice. You can either lie down and surrender and just give up what you are going through now, or you can stand up and push forward. Move ahead. Don't stop. You see, there's a lot in Scripture, and that is one thing that is great about God's Word is in difficult times, in difficult seasons, in difficult moments, you can look to God's Word for instruction, for guidance, for help, for encouragement, for uplifting, right? You can look because you see example after example from the first book of Genesis all the way to the very end in Revelation. You can see that change happens, that seasons come and seasons go, good and bad. But guess what? It doesn't mean that it's over. 
Just because you're in the middle of a season that you didn't expect or just because you may find yourself in this in a season that absolutely seems like the worst it does not mean that it's over right you could be setting up for something that is even better god could be working out something so incredible in your life that you never could have imagined it but maybe you can't reach that next season until you go through what you're facing right now and again god's word is full of examples and reminders of the difficulties that we have to go through to get to god's promise you see as i was reading and studying i started thinking about a couple of different examples and i could sit here and we could talk for hours and hours and hours on god's faithfulness and god's provision through different seasons and stepping into god's promise and the different seasons and changes that we may face and that people have faced throughout scripture but one that hit me is uh the israelites they were in a season of slavery in Egypt. And in that season, it was rough. They wanted escape. They wanted to be set free. But they didn't know how to do it. They didn't have a way to do it in the moment. And then God brought someone into their lives named Moses, who would ultimately and eventually be the one to lead them out of Egypt at God's plan. In God's timing and by God's power you see and they do this so they go through this transition and where God wants to take them from slavery and bondage is to a place of freedom and promise into the promised land that God had for them you see God had promised that he would lead them there lead them out of Egypt into this land that they could have and be free all they had to do was trust him, was believe in him, and just let him lead them. They had to follow. That was it. God was doing all the, the heavy lifting and all the hard work. They just had to be obedient and follow him. They just had to trust him through this season of transition. But you see, they made it hard on themselves because they did not trust him. They did not think that he had the best for them. They did not believe that during this season that they were in, in the midst of e or in the midst of going from Egypt to the promised land, they didn't think that God was really in control or that he really would lead them where he said that he would. And so instead of trusting him, they tried to trust themselves and lean on their own abilities, their own understanding, which led them in the opposite direction of what God had for them. You see, but if they would have just trusted, God was wanting greater things for them. They just had to go through a season of transition. You see, and maybe that's where you are right now. Maybe God has you in a season of transition, a time of change to set you up and to lead you into the promise that he has for your life. You see, it's hard for us sometimes to see what may be ahead because we are blinded by the circumstances that are right around us that we are going through right now, we focus on that, like Peter focusing on the wind and the waves around him instead of focusing on Jesus who is right in front of him. If you take nothing away from this word that I have for you today that I believe that God has put on my heart to share with you, if you take nothing else away from it, just know Jesus is right there with you. All you have to do is keep your eyes focused on him. Keep moving forward don't forget his faithfulness like the israelites did they forgot god's faithfulness how faithful he had been to them the entire time you see and ultimately the israelites they have to wander in the desert or in the wilderness for 40 years 40 years they have to wander right outside of god's promise because they were not obedient because they would not trust him but then the day comes that God does lead his people into the promised land. You see, because of his provision, you see, God made a way for his people to be set free and to step into his promise. You see, God always provides when we trust in him, when we let him lead and when we just choose to humble ourselves 
to surrender, to submit, and to follow, He will always lead us to His promise. We can always trust that He will come through no matter what. You see, and I could go example after example, but one next one that comes to mind is one that we just celebrated a couple weeks ago, and that is Resurrection Sunday. Can you imagine the disciples and what they had to go through that Friday and that Saturday? The doubts, the fears, the anger, the hurt, the questions that they faced during that time. You see, there was a a time, a season of change and a season of transition that God was putting into place and that everyone at that time would have to go through so that ultimately all who believed in Jesus Christ would not have to face death in the same way but rather that we could have victory because he had victory on Sunday morning over both sin and death. You see, it was, it's through those times of difficulty, those times of struggle, those times of hardship that we actually grow, that we mature, that we step into the things that God has for us when we trust in him, when we believe in him, when we don't give up on him. And knowing that he will never give up on us. You see, seasons of change, seasons of transition, they may not be easy. It was not easy for the Israelites, but God eventually got them into the promised land. It was not easy for the disciples without Jesus for a a couple of days, for a few days. They were without him. And that was One of the hardest times of their life, I'm sure, because they felt like everything they had believed in, everything they had hoped for had all of a sudden ended. But God was at work. Just like right now, I want you to know and to believe that God is at work, that God is doing something great in your life during this season. During what you did not expect God is setting up for something great when we trust in him and when we believe in him and when we let him lead us, even when we don't know where we're going or or where we are heading, we can trust that his promises are always greater than anything that we can come up with on our own. His plan is always better than ours and God always provides. We can't forget that. We can't allow our doubts and our worries and our fears and our questions about what's happening right now allow us to forget his faithfulness. That's why it is so important for us to spend time daily with God and in his word. Pray to God. Talk to God. Ask God to speak to your heart that you may hear what he has to say, that you can clearly see where he is leading you. And spend time in his word. Ask him to reveal to you, to show you, to take you to the passages, the examples of his faithfulness, his goodness, and his kindness. And really and truly, I don't have much scripture that I'm going to read to you. But I actually have a couple of verses that I just kind of want to read to you to offer you a little encouragement, a little hope, and a little reminder of God's faithfulness. But if you are struggling right now, and you are having a hard time through this season that you find yourself in, I want you to dig into God's Word. There are so many great books in the Bible for you to read that are reminders and perfect examples of God's faithfulness. So I want you to dig in. Some, if you're looking for something and you don't want, you know, you don't want to go to the Old Testament maybe because, you know, maybe you have a hard time reading that or you have a hard time relating to that. Get in the New Testament. Look at Paul's letters to the church. Be reminded and encouraged by what he has to say, reminded of God's faithfulness to him through everything that he had to go through, which were some difficult seasons as well. But one of one of the best when it comes to having faith in hard times and being reminded of what faith can do for us and being able to persevere through difficulties is the book of Hebrews. And I want to read a couple of verses to you from this, but I just want you to, to pay attention to where our hope comes from. I want you to pay attention to what, to who our faith is truly in. 
Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 says, says this, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain, that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings. You see, in times of difficulty, in times of uncertainty, in times of change, draw near to God because he is right there. He is not distant from us. If we ever feel he is distant, it is because we have distanced ourselves mentally. And spiritually, we have turned away or we are not looking to him because he is always there. He is faithful. All we have to do is look to him and draw near to him. And then verse 23 says this. For people facing hard times, for people who are struggling, who are doubting, who are going through an internal anxiety, right, of what is happening on the outside. Listen to this, verse 23. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful he who promised is faithful you see god is faithful he promises to never leave us to never forsake us and he is faithful he is always there he has never given up on us we can place our hope in him we can be uh we can put our faith in how faithful he truly is and we can be assured, we can be encouraged, we can be, uh, we can be given hope and peace in difficult times, in difficult moments, in difficult seasons by his faithfulness. And then it goes on to say this, and this kind of, instead of us leaning just into God, this comes as we lean into God. This is what happens, verse 24. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. You see, as we lean into God, we are encouraged and inspired. We are spurred on to turn around and spur others on to encourage others because we have encouragement from our Heavenly Father. We have encouragement when we lean into Him, when we are reminded by His Word of His faithfulness, then we can turn around and share that with other people. Now, maybe we can't meet physically right now, but we can do this right here. We can meet face-to-face -face through technology. We can still encourage one another by picking up the phone or by texting or sending an email even, whatever you have to do. Send someone a, a post on Facebook or on Instagram or Twitter. Let them know that you were there. Encourage them. Uplift them. Help them through this difficult time because they could be struggling in the same way that you and I have been. You see, but we can be reminded of God's faithfulness and then in turn remind others of his faithfulness as well. And I want to read Hebrews 12 verse 2 says this, everything else, okay? Before I read this, I want you to I want you to understand this. That everything else in this entire world pales, pales in comparison to Christ. And this is what Hebrews 12 verse 2 says. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. You see, nothing in this world will hold on to us and give us such a foundation and steadiness of peace like Jesus. You see, in our faith, if we put it in anything else, it will fail. It cannot sustain us. It cannot hold us in the roughest times. You know, I look at it kind of like an anchor. And it's actually here in Hebrews that talks about our faith and our hope being an anchor, right? An anchor for us. You see, and it is in difficult seasons and difficult times that we often relate to storms. You see, and the anchor is there to hold the boat steady, 
no matter how bad the wind gets, no matter how rough the waves are. You see, and there's only one thing in this entire world that can hold us steady through any and every storm we face, and that is Jesus. You see, when we trust in Christ, who has overcome sin, who has overcome death by his resurrection from the grave, when we put our faith in him, we are given the power of the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that raised him from the dead, that gave him the power to overcome. We have in us to overcome any season that we face, any difficulty, any hardship, any struggle that we go through. The seasons of transition don't have to beat us and break us, but rather we can lean into God, lean into our faith in Christ Jesus and know that God always provides, that God's promises never fail, that God is always faithful and he will lead us from whatever wilderness or desert we may find ourselves into his promise for our lives. It is only because of our faith in Christ that we can have a hope. You see, Tyler actually kind of said it this morning in the, the message. And it stood out to me because it is something that God actually pointed out to me yesterday and reminded me again this morning with the service. Is that through seasons of uncertainty, Jesus is always certain. We can always trust in him. He is always there for us. He is reliable. He is there no matter what. He is there when we don't see him. All we have to do is take our eyes off of everything else, put our eyes on him, move forward towards him, and trust that he will lead and protect us, that he will take us through any season to his promise. We can trust in him and we can have a peace that is like nothing else this world has to offer. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I thank you so much again for this opportunity, for this time that you have given me and for us to be able to connect, for us to be able to draw near to you. Dear Lord, in such a season of uncertainty, help us to remember that you are always certain, that no matter what, we can trust in you. We can lean into you. We can rely on you, that you are faithful. Lord, through this time, may you use it to strengthen our faith, to give us courage, to give us hope in knowing that you are there, that you will get us through to the other side. Lord, let this be an opportunity for us to let go of the worldly things and to hold on to you. I thank you, Lord, so much for everyone who has heard this message. I pray, God, that it is your words that are encouraging to each and every one of us. Lord, I pray that you draw us near to you. Help us to bring glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us. God bless.